the terrible, awful Civil War, the disgusting details about life during America's bloodiest war. Okay. So before I start reading, the first thing we always need to do when we choose a book to read that's going to give us information about a topic is we want to make sure that we check to see if this is nonfiction. Okay. We can usually look for um, nonfiction text features such as titles, subtitles, graphic organizers, um, charts and graphs, real photographs, captions, and many more. Okay, so we'll kind of flip through and just flip through the book. And this is kind of doing a book walk. As you can see already from that first beginning, we see a map. It has a key or a legend. It tells us what we're looking at. It also has a timeline. And it works through. So we can see the events that are happening in order. A real photograph with a short caption underneath it to tell us what we're looking at. There's even bold printed words. A lot of times authors will include bold print words or a different color font to tell us an important word. A lot of times these words are found in the glossary of a nonfiction text. We have subtitles. Our title, of course, we read at the beginning, but our subtitles are the sections. It gives us an idea of what we're going to be, uh, be reading about. Okay, so this gives us a start of our main idea. So this section would be all about tattered uniforms. Maybe I don't know what the word tattered means. Again, we've got captions, we've got facts, subtitles is a real image, a real photograph. Again, vocabulary, can't really see it there. All right. Oh, this is interesting. So this here is a letter from a specific soldier, a sergeant to be exact. This is called a primary resource. Primary resources are resources that were actually taken from that time period. So if we were to found a real artifact, a real bullet, a letter from a soldier to his wife um, that was written by him, that would actually be a primary source. Okay, so primary means that that person was there, that event happened right there, they saw it with their own eyes. If someone else wrote about it, like this book, for example, it would be a secondary source. Real photograph again. Another real photograph, another primary source. These images are pretty powerful. And then of course in the back we have a glossary. It tells us a little bit more about some of the words that were found in the text. Okay, we can often look at that while we're reading, stop and go look at it. Or we can even look at this before we read to give ourselves an idea of what the words mean. We have read more in internet sites. Sometimes authors will give us more places that we can find more research, whether it's books that we can look on or websites. And then of course, just like we saw in another nonfiction text, we have an index. Remember the index is in alphabetical order, but it does not give us definitions. It just tells us where we can find information at. So if I want to go back and learn more about slavery during the Civil War, I'd come find the word slavery and I know I can find that information on pages six and seven, okay? So I know that there are 29 pages in this book, so I was a good reader, I wanna set a goal of what I wanna read each day, okay? Since this is my first day of reading and I've done my book walk and I've thought through it, I may just read the first section. Usually in the first section of a book, the author's gonna introduce their topic. They're gonna lead us into what we're going to read about. So, the terrible, awful Civil War. Already sounds like my author is not a fan of the Civil War, but maybe we can see words that would show their perspective. A table of contents. The United States during the Civil War. So we're gonna learn, so obviously the Civil War took place in the United States, so we're gonna learn about what life was like. The war begins. As a good reader, I'm thinking maybe this is going to tell me what started the war. Tattered uniforms. I'm not really sure what that word tatter means. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a sticky note and I'm going to mark that word. And I'm just going to put a question mark with it. Because I want to make sure that I think about that word while I'm reading. 
hard ground wet bed rolls. Teeth dollars. Ooh. On the march. Wrong foot. Deadly weapons. Battling germs. Piles of waste. Maybe that's talking about trash. Saw bones. Prison horrors. And then we see our glossary. I read more on the internet sites in our index. These are some pretty powerful titles. I'm, I'm wondering really how this author feels about the Civil War. We're just going to take a look at this map and timeline today just to get us thinking a little bit. Maybe give us some insight into the Civil War. When I read a map, it's very important to read the title and the legend or the key first. The United States during the Civil War, 1860 to 1865. Think about what we just found out here. We learned that this Civil War took place from 1860 to 1865. Yes. I'm in a meeting. 